A balloon over U.S. skies triggers a diplomatic storm. Beijing denies Washington's accusations of spying. As mistrust deepens between the world's two biggest powers, what lies ahead for the U.S.-China relationship? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Deri Nabugeda. China and the United States have been at odds for years now. A trade war, tensions on Taiwan, the South China Sea and Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the fault lines have widened as Washington scrambles to counter Beijing's rising economic and strategic influence. But this week's appearance of a giant Chinese balloon over the skies of North America is threatening to further destabilize that relationship. Washington says it's being used to spy. In response, it canceled a planned visit by Beijing to Beijing by Secretary of State Antony Blinken. China maintains that it's a civilian weather balloon that was blown off course. The Pentagon says a second balloon has now been spotted over Latin America. We'll get to our guests in a moment. First, this update from our White House correspondent, Kimberly Halkett. This thing is up in the sky. China's surveillance balloon is triggering a diplomatic row that has prompted U.S. Secretary of State um, Antony delighted. Blinken to postpone his weekend trip to Beijing. It's an irresponsible act and that the PRC's decision to take this action on the eve of my planned visit is detrimental to the substantive discussions that we were prepared to have. The U.S. is accusing China of violating international law. The balloon is still hovering over the skies of the United States. It was first tracked over the Aleutian Islands near Alaska and traveled through western Canada and into the U.S. state of Montana, where it was spotted near a military installation, home to some of America's nuclear missiles. I have no idea what this thing is. It seems so brazen and just so insane to me that, that anyone would even attempt to just push a balloon over the sky. The Chinese foreign ministry acknowledged ownership of the balloon and expressed regret for the incident, but said it was merely collecting weather data, not intelligence. The Pentagon has its doubts. Still, it says the balloon is not a threat to anyone on the ground or planes since it's flying well above commercial air traffic. But there are questions about why the Pentagon is allowing the Chinese surveillance balloon to linger. Looking at the potential for debris uh, and the impact on civilians on the ground or property damage. Right now, as I mentioned, we, we assess that it does not pose a risk to people on the ground as it currently is traversing the continental United States. That hasn't satisfied Biden's critics in Congress, who believe the U.S. needs to take further action to punish China. We cannot reward the CCP for this kind of flagrant violation of our sovereignty by pretending everything is business as normal. And a, a grip and grin session with Xi Jinping as this was happening would have been a terrible look for U.S. diplomacy. The CCP will continue to push the envelope until we push back. This isn't the first time that China has launched a spy balloon over the United States. The Pentagon says that in recent years, surveillance balloons have been spotted over Guam and Hawaii. But in the case of this current balloon, the Pentagon won't say whether or not it eventually will be shot down, only that it's expected to drift over the United States for the next couple of days. Kimberly Helkett, Al Jazeera, the White House. Let's now bring in our guest. Joining us from Washington is Heino Klink, who's a retired U.S. Army colonel and a senior associate at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. In Beijing, Victor Gao, vice president of the Center for China and Globalization. Over in London, we have Zeno Leone, who's a lecturer in defense studies at King's College London. Welcome to you all. Thanks so much for your time with us on Inside Story. Uh, Zeno Leone, to you first. Do you believe that this was an, an accident, a, a weather balloon? thrown off course, as the Chinese say, or was it deliberate, a spy balloon, as the Americans allege? I think it's difficult to determine, but the most important thing is that, um, first of all, the Chinese have uh, apologized for that, um, uh, acknowledging that this was a mistake, but also 
this balloon is um, as big as three buses, and so uh, it seems eventually more a sort of be a clumsy attempt at spying over the US territory rather than a subtle uh, operation of uh, deception and espionage. Uh, but anyway, I mean, if for the United States at this point it is so important to determine whether um, this is a threat, uh, this, this was an attempt at spying over the US territory, they should do anything they can to bring it down and find out whether uh, it was such an attempt uh, or not. Instead, it sounds like they're going to let it um, uh, fly over the US territory for another two days. So I think there should be uh, more consistency on, on this point. Okay, and on this point in particular, let's bring in Heino Klink. So the balloon uh, was reportedly hovering over sensitive sites, including a field housing US nuclear missile. The Biden administration has decided not to uh, shoot it down, but allow it to linger. Uh, how do you explain that? Quite frankly, I can't explain it. Uh, if I were still in government, uh, I would be advising senior leaders to bring down the balloon. It's a clear violation of American sovereignty, and it should be brought down. Let me just state as well, that, that doesn't necessarily mean it needs to be shot down. There are other ways of being able to bring the balloon uh, safely down. So my policy recommendations would be uh, to bring the balloon down. Right, and Heino, the uh, defense official said that the U.S. has, quote, options to deal with this balloon if the risk it poses changes. Uh, what are the options, do you think, that are being weighed by the Pentagon and State Department at this point? Or, or, or what are the options that should be weighed? So uh, I'm confident that our military has a variety of technical means of being able to bring the balloon down. I think now it's a calculation of ensuring that any potential risk uh, is mitigated. As was stated by the Pentagon spokesperson, of course, the military is concerned about uh, debris causing uh, harm to civilians or damage to, to property. That's certainly something that needs to be considered. That being said, um, regardless of the circumstances, this is a violation of American sovereignty, American airspace, uh, and it cannot be tolerated, and it thus must be brought down. Uh, Victor Gao from Beijing, the fact that the Chinese issued a statement of regret, is that unusual to you? No, I think the Chinese government is just being honest and being straightforward. China said it's a mistake. It's a... Uh, uh, the balloon getting out of control because of the strong wind blowing it off course. And uh, uh, in this way, I think China said the right thing. China acknowledged that this is a Chinese balloon and acknowledged that this is above the uh, skies in the United States. And uh, China is urging calm and the calling on the United States being re realistic. And uh, I hope the United States will uh, go along with China in getting this episode, unfortunate as it is, behind us. And then uh, Secretary of State Blinken will uh, resume his very important visit to China. And the two countries can really sit down and talk about much more important things about world peace and development. Do you think that they Don't actually managed to defuse the situation, however, Victor? I mean, the fact that they issued a statement of regret, it doesn't really seem like a Chinese government thing to do, especially uh, to kind of apologize, right? Well, I think China has just been pragmatic. Uh, China acknowledged this is a China's a balloon. It is in the United States above in the sky. And China declared that it is a weather balloon. So don't be too much agitated about it. And uh, China and the United States need to figure out a way to put this whole episode behind us. One On the other hand, allow me to emphasize one point. It also illustrates that the world is only one world and the whole atmosphere is only one atmosphere. And if China launches a balloon, it may soon get to the United States. And this is the fact we are facing with. Therefore, the philosophical point is more important than the balloon. Let's bring in And the philosophical Let's, point is hi, no, China and the United States need to get along with each other. Hi, no, go ahead. I know you want to respond. Well, besides philosophy, uh, let's talk about reality. Within the last 12 months, the Chinese military has consistently unprofessionally and dangerously intercepted a variety of foreign 
military aircraft in international airspace, including some involved in the enforcement of the United Nations sanctions that the People's Republic of China had actually voted for. They've shot a laser from one of their ships at an Australian aircraft, also in international airspace. So, and your reporting even uh, documented that there are other balloons that are currently in flight, and apparently there have been other balloons that have entered American airspace uh, over Guam and Hawaii. So this is not an isolated incident. This is not just a mistake. And I think trying to portray it as just an unfortunate incident uh, tries to cover up the malign intent, again, of the Chinese communist regime. Let's bring in Zeno uh, from London on that point, because, you know, using balloons as spy platforms goes back, in fact, to the early days of the Cold War. And, uh, China uses them. The United States uses them as well. Uh, I, I suppose what's different here is that uh, the Chinese didn't think that they'd get caught, right? Well, I disagree on this point, because how could they, could they think that they were not going to get caught? I mean, people could see this, this balloon. So... Uh, if this is an attempt at, of espionage, I find it very, very bizarre, especially taking into account that China, although from a military point of view, it remains behind the United States in many ways, uh, they're really thriving to um, invest and to get to, you know, to get a really top uh, technology when it comes to uh, intelligence, cyber power, and also, you know, traditional military power. So it's um, eventually it's a very clumsy attempt. And um, going back to, to contribute to the discussion between uh, my esteemed colleagues uh, of a few uh, seconds ago, I think on the one hand, the Chinese elites and military, they need to be extremely careful at this time of delicate um, US-China relations. They need to avoid any ambiguous actions. On the other hand, the US needs to be careful not to release this sort of uh, statements uh, until it has uh, the right evidence. And we've seen something similar one, uh, almost one year ago when uh, a US official from the US was arguing that China was selling weapons to Russia. It turned out to be a fake news at that, at that specific moment. So we need more evidence before releasing these sort of statements. And this is absolutely important if this relationship uh, uh, needs to be, has to be maintained on a more manageable and pragmatic level of interaction. We're going to get into the relationship in a moment and what the future holds, in fact, for the relationship. But Victor Gao, uh, there are reports, I'm sure you've heard, uh, that uh, reportedly a second balloon has been spotted over Latin America. Can you tell us uh, any more information on that? And what do you think China is trying to accomplish now having reportedly two balloons in the hemisphere? First of all, uh, it is true that the Chinese uh, government has already acknowledged that the uh, balloon uh, above in the sky in the United States is China's balloon. Uh, there is no uh, indication or evidence that the, the other balloon, the second balloon, is also uh, China's balloon, or at least the Chinese government has not acknowledged that. Uh, therefore, I think we need to call a spade a spade and focus on the balloon in the United States. And I hope both China and the United States need to learn how to engage with each other if there is an unfortunate incident like this, and the two countries can focus on really what matters and to get along with each other and to maintain peace and stability between the two countries. This is a very rare uh, occasion when I hear the United States Secretary of State Blinken calling, uh, saying, telling the whole world that the United States sovereignty and territorial integrity have been threatened don't forget, China has been declaring that its sovereignty and territorial integrity have been violated and threatened again and again and again. Right, by the but United are you States saying that the U.S. Years. sovereignty has not been threatened with this balloon? I mean, surely a balloon over U.S. skies does threaten the U.S. sovereignty, does it not? What I mean is that it's very rare to hear the top leaders, uh, the Secretary of State of the United States, declaring that the U.S. sovereignty and territorial integrity have been threatened. But please keep in mind, China has declared on many, many, many occasions that China's sovereignty and territorial integrity have been threatened again and again and again by the United States. Therefore, both China and the United States need to learn how not to constitute any such threat, uh, directly or 
indirectly, indirectly, intentionally or unintentionally, so that peace can prevail between Washington and Beijing, rather than these two great countries being distracted into confrontation or rivalry. Heino, what do you make of the timing of all of this? Just after the U.S., for example, reinvigorated its military alliance with the Philippines, and right before the Secretary of State scheduled a trip to Beijing, which, of course, has now been postponed. Well, first of all, um, many of China's neighbors have, in fact, over the years, uh, complained about Chinese infringements on their territorial integrity and sovereignty. India, for instance, uh, South Korea, Japan, and others. So this is not just an incident confined to the United States. I think that the reinvigoration of in uh, U.S. and Filipino relationship, plus the steps that the Japanese are taking to enhance their own defense, and many, many other countries, including even the NATO general secretary uh, traveling to uh, the region recently, and the statements in the NATO strategic concept, have point to the fact that China's neighbors and others around the world are concerned about the aggressive uh, intent and activities of the CCP and the PLA. That being said, uh, it's been reported that President Biden and General Secretary Xi had a productive meeting uh, during the G20 in Bali, and Secretary Austin and Minister of Defense Wei had a productive meeting in Cambodia uh, during the ADMM Plus meetings last year, and that there was some potential momentum for some productive talks. I will tell you that uh, within the defense circles, uh, the U.S. Defense Department has been trying very, very diligently, even too diligently, I may say, uh, almost acting as an ardent suitor with the PLA counterparts to have substantive conversations. And it's the Chinese that have been rebuffing those at every opportunity. Right. All okay, that being but these, said, these, when you... These apologies, but these um, issues that you mentioned, the, the U.S. expanding its military presence in the Philippines, the U.S. and Japanese uh, integrating their command structure. So uh, from the Chinese perspective, these can be seen as provocative. Um, so do you think that there could be any link between these particular... Uh, moves by the United States and the incident of the balloon, Heino? Uh, if so, it would be a clumsy reaction, frankly. Um, uh, but uh, again, I would say that what the United States and its partners and allies in the region and globally are doing are a reaction to what the Chinese have been doing over the last many years, infringing upon sovereignty of many countries, as well as, and, you know, continuing the pervasive military pressure on Taiwan at unprecedented levels. Okay, let's bring in Zeno. Uh, I know you want to respond to this. No, well, first of all, I just want to say that if we really needed to speculate about the timing of the balloon, uh, there have been just some discussions around the fact that Xi Jinping was under pressure from nationalist constituencies about um, Blinken's uh, visit. Uh, on the 5th and 6th of uh, February. So eventually we might see a relationship between the balloon and, and, and those sorts of uh, 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 protests or those sorts of uh, demands, if we really, we really want to. Uh, but I think, um, broadly speaking, China is very concerned with what now has become clear, um, uh, the project of a global NATO. This is now on Stolterbank agenda. And that's why he went to the Republic of Korea. He went to the Republic of Korea to sell the project of global NATO, to make the point that what happens in Europe in terms of security challenges, uh, it matters also uh, for Asia. And also to make the point that if Putin loses the war in Ukraine, then other authoritarian countries in Asia will think twice be before taking that, those sort of assertive actions. China has said that since 2019, they see this, this sort of development as encirclement. And so this really brings us back to a sort of Cold War dynamic. Right. Victor, we also heard from the Biden administration, uh, this was in 2022, in fact, unveiling the defense strategy, saying China is the greatest danger to American security and calling for an urgent concerted effort 
to build military capabilities to, to, to deter Beijing in the decades to come. Uh, does this threaten China? First of all, if there is any irony in the world, nothing can be greater than this irony uttered by the uh, U.S. President Biden. Uh, it, when the United States calls China as a threat, you need to ask one very important question. How and what does China threaten the United States of? After all, the United States is the strongest military power in the world. Why should the United States be afraid and fear China? Does China occupy any inch of land of foreign countries? Absolutely not. China has been peaceful for all these years, and China does not have any occupied land. Um, Haino, I'd like you to respond to what we just heard from Victor in Beijing, and also um, tell me how you see the relationship going forward between the United States and China, because a lot of people would describe it at an all-time low, in fact. So... I would respond with respect to the questions of territorial uh, claims that China has territorial disputes with most of its neighbors. All you have to do is look at the Ch South China Sea, for instance. But uh, on the bilateral U.S.-China relationship, it is definitely at a, at a very, very low point. Um, I think coming out of COVID and looking at China's uh, policies, uh, policy implementation, draconian policy implementations in places like Hong Kong, and it's very pervasive and oppressive daily uh, military incursions uh, into the Taiwanese air defense identification zones and other activities globally, for instance, using economic coercion against countries all over the globe. Uh, there's a realization now, not just in Washington, but in capitals worldwide, that um, there needs to be a common understanding, recognition, and acknowledgement that the CCP uh, is a malign force in the world. And now countries are starting to organize themselves to push back against that, understanding that uh, economics is just one aspect of the relationship. Um, so you see greater tendencies all over the world to uh, try to build a resilient approach to the relationship with China. The United States is no different. Uh, I do not uh, see things improving anytime soon. Zeno, a U.S. Air Force general said in a memo recently that he thinks the U.S. would fight China in the next two years. Uh, I must say, though, the Pentagon uh, distanced themselves from these remarks, saying they were not consistent with American military assessments. But this is uh, what one U.S. Air Force general had said. How would you assess uh, the risk of war currently between the two countries? I think on the one hand it's uh, very concerning that somebody so prominent uh, released these sort of remarks. It makes me think that you know they have um, some kind of direct information uh, alluding to uh, the possibility of a war. Um, on the other hand, I don't believe uh, these statements about you know, China, uh, you know, when the Taiwanese say that China will invade by a certain date, uh, I think this, this is speculation. We can't predict that. And why it hasn't already invaded? Why is it not invading today? So um, we need to be more careful with that. Um, and it's very reassuring that the Pentagon has, has said that those, those words don't represent uh, the, the Defense uh, Department. Uh, going back to uh, the broader U.S.-China relationship, I think it's absolutely concerning that uh, we are at a low point. I agree with that. However, if we put it in an historical perspective, we see that since 1972, and so since when Nixon and Mao met and the reapprochement started, there have been a lot of ups and downs managed with pra pragmatism during the Cold War, managed through economic cooperation uh, after the Cold Wars. And I think that um, the way forward will be a sort of new type of Cold War characterized by security, military frictions on the one hand, and continuing uh, deep economic cooperation on the other hand. But there will also be um, some deal of decoupling. The US and China will be decoupling over the strategic sectors of the economy. And perhaps this might bring some stability in the relationship because that economic interdependence is the cause of many frictions at the moment.
Right, but just let me stick with you for one more second here, uh, Zeno. And President Joe Biden, at the time of his campaign, he campaigned on building a new approach to foreign policy and relations with China. But since then, what's changed, really, between the two countries since President Biden came into office? Well, uh, President, President Biden's foreign policy has a very distinguishing uh, feature, which is the idea of updating alliances. And we've seen this, the launch of different um, uh, US-led multilateral frameworks. And this is about the idea of decoupling. On the one hand, I don't know whether the Biden administration will be successful at uh, basically recreating a new version of the liberal order, a more exclusive club led by the United States, uh, made of like-minded democracies. I don't know whether they will succeed, but clearly this is a very clear characteristic of his foreign policy. He's trying very hard. The big question is, will the successor of Biden continue to pursue uh, this sort of agenda? Because the US has just realized that they need partners to take right. on China. They need a coalition. OK, uh, Victor Gao, so given uh, how wide the rift seems to be between the two countries and the fact that the uh, Blinken trip was happening in the first place, a lot of people said that's already positive, and I think you shared that point of view. So how much of a missed opportunity is it now that he's had to postpone? Uh, it's unfortunate that Blinken is postponing the visit. However, I truly believe uh, he will visit China because visiting China, engaging with China, with the, uh, the United States, is good not only just for China. It is good absolutely for the United States. And it is a good positive development for world peace and development. So if Blinken doesn't go to China, we all need to weep. And Americans will also suffer the consequences. If China and the United States do not engage with each other, and if they do not eventually get along with each other, there will be no peace for mankind. So let's do the only responsible thing, that is to promote peace and getting along between China and the United States, rather than that crazy general. Can you believe it? He's not only a general, he's a commander of the mobility force of the U.S. Air Force. How can any general in the United States, talk about a war between China and the United States. Right. A war between China and the United States will lead to Armageddon. Does he want to destroy Homo sapien? Okay, Wake we'll up. have to leave it there. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Heino Kling, Victor Gao, and Zeno Leone, we thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. Join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is AJ Inside Story. From myself and the whole team here in Doha, thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.